Hey friends, Ben here. Over the past 15 years, I've had the opportunity to help hundreds of leaders create websites that work for their business and organizations. As you probably guessed, one of the first steps in the process of building a website is deciding what pages you need. In this episode, I'll share four steps that will help you decide which pages to include and what to leave out. Let's go. Welcome to The Friday Habit with Benjamin Manley and Mark Labriola II. The Friday Habit is for creators, entrepreneurs, and agency owners looking for actionable ideas on how to grow their business and be more profitable. We'll pull from our combined knowledge of over 20 years and interview thought leaders that will inspire you and give you the motivation you need to kick your business into high gear. Buckle up. It's Friday. Heidi ho, neighbor. (laughs) (laughs) What was that? Oh, you know, just uh, my greeting to you this, this Friday. Greetings, Mark. It's good talking That's to right. you. Hey, man, I got a, I got a question All right, for I'm you ready. here real quick. Ooh, look at those nice Brand Viva conversation cards. Can, can people buy those? Uh, no, I mean, they're exclusive? not really. Yeah, okay. they're exclusive. Wow. You can you can uh, be one of our clients and uh, get, get some okay. for free. Okay. But you got to start go. a podcast. Okay, here we go. Would you rather have a one minute conversation with your past self or future self? Oh man. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, that is a great, that is an interesting question because yeah, yeah, it's like a one minute. Okay. You have one minute to talk to your past self or your future self. Hmm. Oh man. I, I, <laughs> I think I have an answer for you now. Listen, if I, okay, let me just tell you first yeah, real quick. Yeah. You, you if I talk to my past self in one minute, I could become a billionaire. Right, that's true. He'd be, I'd, he'd just be like, mm. buy Apple, buy Amazon. <laughs> you know, just give me all these in sixty wow, seconds. Okay, you know, it's kind of like Back to the Future Two, right? Where, where uh, Biff goes back with the comic book uh, or the uh, sports book and and yep. gives it to his past self. Yep. Okay, uh, I hear you. Problem is, if you talk to yourself that way, is you're already in a timeline where that didn't happen to you. So you're helping a different version of yourself in the future. Right. So it's not really affecting your life at all. So that's true. So that sounds good for that version of yourself. That's great. So that would be very <laughs> uh, philanthropic of you. Very <laughs> generous to tell. You're pretty your, screw yourself over because you're trying to help us another version of you in a different timeline. <laughs> Look at helpful. you going all like time travel, philosophical, like... <laughs> But, okay, and here's the other thing. I don't know if I trust my past self to be smart enough to actually follow my current advice. I actually trust, (laughs) I trust my current (laughs) self more to follow my future self's advice. So I would rather ask my future self and say like, hey, what should I do and get that way? And Mm. then that way, my current timeline in the future, I could learn what happens next or whatever. And then my current self and my timeline, then I can profit off of it that way or get advice or be like, Hey guys, uh, here's some problems you're going to run into the future. Here's the <laughs> problem. Like, the world's ending in 2046. Exactly. So buy some yeah. rice and bread. <laughs> exactly. Like, Hey, you know, it's a little risk management. I could know what's coming up next and maybe like, Hey guys, here's what went wrong. And now here's how you could fix it ahead of time. So I think I'll talk to my future <laughs> self. Okay. Uh, I, I think that that definitely makes sense. And <laughs> I, I hear you. So, I guess the question would be is if I help my alternate self, will I still feel the benefits of that? Cause are we all the same people on the, on, on these alternate like universes? No, (laughs) I don't know. I'm just like, (laughs) no, Mark, that's not how it works. All right. Hey, listen, if you guys have an answer to this question, go ahead and leave us an email at hello at the Friday habit dot com. You can also uh, if you enjoy this podcast, subscribe and leave us a review at Apple Podcasts. It helps us reach more people and and grow this community. And we would just like to hear from you guys to see if you are enjoying uh, the the content that we're making. And in your review, to let us know which time travel theory you subscribe to. Uh, We need to know. (laughs) That's that's right. Uh, and also, you know, no one has done this yet. So this is a call to action, a challenge that if you're listening to this, you should send us a voice memo. I don't believe anyone has emailed us a voice memo. It's scary, but- Mark. It's scary <laughs> to record your own voice. It is it could, scary. It could be published. It could be. It will and, be published. It, it would be published. And then we would answer that question or talk about you on, on the Friday habit. But if you do record a voice memo, you can do that and then email it to hello at the Friday habit.com as well. 
it's like we've got a lot of kids like sitting in the back of the class with their arms crossed mm-hmm. and they don't want to raise their hand. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We see you. We know you're listening. We see the stats. We know you're there. There are over. You're lurking. There are hundreds of those people out there <laughs> <laughs> lurking. We're talking to you. That's right. So if, if this message has reached your heart today, <laughs> email us at hello at the Friday All right. Hey, let's get to business. So, Ben, you've made hundreds of websites. Dare I say thousands of websites? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not keeping track anymore. Yeah. Lots, lots and lots yeah. of websites. Uh, if you want to see any of the websites that Ben has uh, created or participated in creating, head over to knapsackcreative.com and you will see amazing content. And you will experience the validity of this man's advice. So after all these years of you creating websites, you have four pages that are a must. Four pages. Well, after all these years of creating sites, I have four steps you can take to decide which page is. Okay. Not necessarily four pages. There's not a... Okay, I hear what you're saying now. I mean, I could say there are four pages that pretty much everybody needs. I could tell you right now, you need a home page, you need an about page, probably like a services page and a contact page. So yeah, there are four. There That's true. If your future self were to come back into time and <laughs> ask you which pages those would <laughs> be... Which pages should I have? <laughs> that, I'm wasting my minute on that. Um, <laughs> but hey, if you, know. you need, if, <laughs> if you need to decide if you have say 20 pages and we have to figure out, okay, which ones do we put up there? Yeah. What advice do we have? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it could be a services page or a products page, depending on what your business does. Just had to add that qualifier there. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's basically four steps that I recommend taking. And this is kind of what I walk through people usually, uh, when we're deciding what pages to include on their site. So I'd say first, honestly, you need to just define the purpose of your site because everybody has a different reason for having a site. And mm-hmm. a lot of people don't necessarily think this through up front. Like, what is the point of their site? They might just think, hey, I need a website so that my site, you know, so that it looks good online. You know, that's that's a pretty basic thing most people say is like, I just don't want to be embarrassed when somebody goes to my website <laughs> and yeah. people to get turned off by seeing how sloppy it looks or, you know, poorly designed or, Hey, you know, it worked for a while, but you know, I built it myself and now I want it to look more professional. So that's one, one thing is just like legitimizing. So there's a few different things like kind of different types of websites. I think uh, one's like the legitimizer where it's like, okay, I get referrals. I want somebody to go to my site and just see it and be like, Oh, this company actually looks like a real company. They look professional. I just need something to legitimize me and then hopefully they'll contact me, right? Yep. So there's that one. There's the converter where it's like, okay, I not only do I want it to legitimize me, but I want it to actually point people towards taking a specific action, whether it's signing up for my newsletter or scheduling a call with me or taking the next step to sign up for a free trial. So there's the converter where it's like a little bit more action oriented, more than just legitimizing. Hmm. Beyond that, then the next step really is like the attractor. Like maybe you want a website that's like, hey, not only does it convert people and legitimize my business, but it actually brings in new leads that would have not found me before. So that means maybe building out your SEO a little bit, having a, a blog, a lot of other things that will, you know, maybe bring people in. Maybe you're running some ads, but that type of site is actually to attract new business. Beyond that, there's also like the salesperson, which is kind of even step up from there, where it's like not only is it doing all those things, attracting people, mm-hmm. converting them, legitimizing, maybe you're actually taking payments on your website and, you know, actually making e-commerce sales on your site. It's a salesperson. Yeah, exactly. So it's your website's basically a salesperson. And then another version, this this is kind of like a little bit on its own. This is a separate purpose for a site. Um, and it, this could kind of go with any of these other ones is like the educator. So maybe you, you want to have a site that's more informative. You're just informing people about a specific topic, but usually people are informing people in order uh, to meet another goal. So even if it's like, let's say it's a, a site that's um, advocating for a cause and it's educating people about that cause, lots of times there might be a call to action to go ahead and um, sign up for a newsletter or to get involved in some way or donate. So even if it is a little educator, usually it, it kind of pairs with one of those other things too. So that's the first thing really just thinking about like, what do I need this to do? The purpose. Yeah. Like what's mm-hmm. the point of this site? Because a lot of times it's just like, Oh, I just want it to look nice, but you need to think about what does it need to do? And even beyond that, it's like, what does it not need to do? Because sometimes people try to educate their clients almost like too much about their process mm, or right. too much about, 
you know, things related to it. It's like, Hey, I, I don't really need my website to, you know, tell the whole history of my company. Maybe I just need to let them know that I have the experience that they need to feel comfortable to hire me, you know, so you can kind of eliminate some of that unnecessary stuff. So just think through, you know, once you know what that purpose is, think about like, what do you actually not need to have? And kind of think about as you go through this process, not adding stuff that's unnecessary just because you have the information, people may not care and it may not actually help get uh, people into that goal that you have. So, well, yeah. And, and if I think if you can establish that in the beginning, like the purpose of the site, right, then mm-hmm. you can save money really, right. On not creating pages or writing copy or doing all these things that really don't benefit the purpose of your site. Yep. So I love that. It makes sense. Yeah. You eliminate a lot of wasted energy. And the other thing is some websites, you, uh, you might be like, oh yeah, I wanted to be a sales person. I want to be all these things. But really some websites can be super simple. Like uh, I work with a company called um, Parkland and they have, they're an envelope m- manufacturing company and their strategy is very specific with their website. They realize that on their website, they don't need to show everybody every piece of equipment they have. They have a huge, you know, facility. They have tons of employees and they could brag about how many employees they have. They could brag about here's the equipment we have. But in the end, the customer doesn't really care too much about that. They want to know, right. do the envelopes look awesome? Like, mm-hmm. you know, what is the end result? And people are people going to open the envelopes? So all the website mm-hmm. talks about is really like getting your envelopes open. And their call to action isn't like, hey, you know, set up a call with us because they know their customers are big. They're going after really big customers. So their call to action is sign up for our creative mailing where they send like an envelope, an inspirational envelope to the company every quarter so they can see like cool designs and like, oh, here's how your envelopes could look. There's that. And then they can also order like an inspiration book through their website for free. So it's like, those are the calls to action. They know that they're not going to convert a customer. Their whole strategy with their website is to guess, just get people on a list so that one of their salespeople can reach out to them. So they're just really specific. They're not just trying to tell them everything about their company, the history, like no one yeah. cares. It's like, what can you do for me? And then what's the next step I should take? And that's yeah. kind of like how they're being really strategic with their site. Interesting. I like that. All right. So number two, Number two is just create a list of your pages, a simple list to start with. So now that you've thought about your purpose, then start creating uh, a list of pages. So um, at the time of this recording, this blog post should be live. If you go to uh, knapsackcreative.com and go to the blog, there is a post there that is actually titled the same as this episode, what uh, pages should I include in my website? And you can kind of look through this list. Um, I can kind of read through a few of them, but if you want to visually look at this list, uh, we can also link to this blog post in the show notes as well. But the the pages that you could consider, just some common sense ones that are pretty standard across most websites are you're going to want like a homepage, of course, um, services or products, depending on your company, uh, an about page, a blog page is pretty standard and helpful, and I'll talk more about that, a contact page, and then just some more footer links like terms and conditions and privacy policy. So those are some standard things to think about starting with some other pages that you might want to think about depending on the situation and what your site's trying to do. You might want to have an FAQs page to answer some common questions. One cool thing about that too is having an FAQs page gives you a chance to rank for common questions people might be Googling for. So if people are like the Squarespace have phone support, you know, like that could be a good FAQ to include on the website. So when people Google that, our page shows up and we can talk about that and then let people know we help build on Squarespace. Some other ones would be portfolio, a shop, an events page, um, a press page, testimonials page, uh, an approach page that talks about your philosophy about like why you do what you do, maybe some case studies, a team page that shows off, you know, some of your team and bios, a pricing page, if that's something you want to publish, that comes back, the pricing thing comes back a lot to your strategy. Kind of like we talked about, what's the purpose of your site that could be oversharing depending on what it is, or pricing might be super important depending on your industry and how transparent pricing typically is. You might want a careers page. If one of your secondary goals is to recruit a resources page, donate page, you know, if you're a nonprofit or something like that, uh, maybe a page that, you know, talks about your podcast. So those are just some additional things to kind of get your thoughts going what I would do is just think through those as inspiration and decide like, Hey, which ones of those would actually be good in my situation? Mm, That's good. All right. Then number three. So number three is now that you have kind of a list um, of pages um, and you can make that, you know, bolded list and just indent the sub pages that you think you might want to have. That's the easiest way to do it to start with. 
once you have this list, now you're going to want to think about it from a new perspective, not just from the purpose of your site, but now thinking about from an SEO perspective. So um, thinking about how can you make build your site in a way that's more likely that it gets found when people search using Google or Bing or Yahoo or whatever they're using to search with. You just want to make sure that you actually consider things like, for example, like a services page. You don't want to just name your services page straight up services. It's okay if it's titled that in your navigation, but the page title within your um, website builder should be something more specific like like home maintenance services or something like that because people aren't going to search for the word services to find you. They're going to search for something more specific like home maintenance services or power washing in Lynchburg or you know whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. They do a lot of power washing in Lynchburg, so I could totally... <laughs> See why hey, that, that that red Virginia clay, you know, it gets gets on your house from the rain, and you got to power wash it. So that's right. Yeah, so that's an example of, of how to do it. But what you want to do is, like, let's say for for me, one thing I could do, you know, if I built my site, is I might want to have a services drop down that says something like website support, website design, logo design, or whatever other services we might mm-hmm. decide to offer, or messaging services, or story brand services, or something like that. So it's good to actually create a page for each of your individual services if you care about attracting people for those services because each of those pages gives you a chance to rank for that and a place to put keywords related to that. So Mm. back to our home maintenance company example, you might actually want to create a section for commercial services and residential services. Under residential services, you might want to have a page for power washing. Uh, You might want to have one for uh, external painting, you know, exterior painting, uh, interior painting, whatever other maintenance service you offer and then talk about each of those there because then you get a chance for people like to search like Lynchburg, Virginia power washing, you know, and you can optimize that page to rank for that. If you just have a services page, then you're talking about all lots of different unrelated things and it makes it harder to rank for one of those because you can't use the title of that page to specifically target that or the URL of that page to specifically target that one service. All that to say, like, as you're thinking about the pages you want to have, you really want to kind of consider the SEO perspective in like what terms you want to rank for. Because if you want to rank for a term, you need to probably have a page that talks a lot about that specific topic. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. I think that's, that's really good. I, you know, one thing I've seen too that people do is a lot of times they'll have like their main page, but then they'll, in their footer, I'll see a bunch of text uh, to other links to other pages. It may not be like in a drop down up top or something like that, but you know, it's like, oh, medical industry or, you know, other things like that I've seen people do. Is that kind of what you're saying as far as the SEO juice that you get by putting that information somewhere on your site? Exactly. If it gets to be too overwhelming to put in the main navigation, I think you start there. But let's say I wanted to create, you know, pages for different industries that we work for, like with, with Knapsack. I don't want to put a drop down like industries we work with. I don't really want to put that in my main navigation. So I might want to put that in the footer or somewhere else. So for us, we have a work page with categories. And when you go there, it says like websites for consultants, websites for artists, you know, websites for authors. And so we actually rank really well for a lot of those because we just have a portfolio page with all the websites we've built for that industry there. Even though it's not the main navigation, we actually get probably half the traffic that finds our website by people searching for um, consultant websites. And we're, you know, one of the top results when you Google that, it's like, oh, consultant websites. And then it shows up in Google as 17 creative consultant websites. And you click on that, comes to our work page, and then you can look at the sites we've built and at the bottom it says, hey, you want us to build a website for you? You know, go here. So that comes down to just that strategy of thinking about like how should you structure your pages based on what people are searching for. So um, so yeah, that's a great way to do it, putting it in the footer if it's something you don't want in your main navigation or having something uh, like in your portfolio or something like that broken out to different pages so people can easily find um, helpful information about what you do. Oh, and actually one bonus thing for number three is also if you don't want to add all these other pages, I was just going to mention including just a blog is a really simple way to help rank for additional terms without um, adding additional pages because you can write posts about like five power washing tips, you know, to get get it done right or whatever it is. Um, hopefully something that probably more strategic than that because somebody that's looking to do it themselves probably isn't going to like hire you, but maybe it could be like... Yeah, the um, tools you need to do power washing right. 
Right. That's that's exactly. That's a good idea because then you can be like, I love this power. How far we're going with the power washing, um, or it could be like, um, should I hire a professional painter? And then it's like, oh, it talks about like here's the you know here's the cost versus you know benefit um, to hiring a professional or situations in which you should hire a professional, and then you offer your services. It's kind of like evergreen content that can be up there forever, and then also provide some sort of value based off of what someone's searching. Exactly. And the cool thing with that is if you have a blog, every time you update your website, Google and other search engines really uh, like that. And they actually will help you rank higher than more frequently you update your website with valuable content. So it's a good way to kind of, if one of your purposes is to kind of to attract new people, then a blog's kind of a simple way to do that. So anyway, that's a side note. Moving on to number four. Number four. Make it easy to navigate. So <laughs> it sounds so simple. Exactly. Make it easy. So it's like basically you want to keep usability in mind. So a lot of people overthink this. It's tempting to want to be creative with the way you name your navigation. I think a lot of people mm-hmm. are like, oh, I want to get creative with this. Maybe uh, maybe my blog should be called Innovative Insights. And I'm like, I don't know what that's <laughs> going to be when I click on it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> right. Your goal is like you don't want to make anybody think when it comes to navigating your site. And my analogy is let's say you rent a car and you get in the car. What if that manufacturer got super creative with how they laid out the interior? They're like, guys, what if instead of driving and steering with your hands, you could steer with your feet and use your hands for the accelerator? What if we do like a joystick here? Like if everybody got really creative with how you drive a car, then every time you walk, get into a new car, you're going to have to relearn how to drive. And so it's like, that's kind of what happens when you get creative with website navigation, because it's something you shouldn't really be thinking about. All you want to do is find the information you're looking for. Mm. And if you're making people get caught up on how to learn how to even use your website, you're going to lose them. So you want to make it really obvious. Do you remember back in like the the mid 2000s when flash sites were really popular and people could do like some very (laughs) creative stuff? Sometimes I'd get on sites and I'm like, I don't even know how to navigate. Like you'd have to like secretly move your mouse over a certain area that then expanded and it was like, what the heck? Yeah. In, in some ways, that was like cool because it was like innovative and it was like yeah. the web was new. Now it's a little bit more of a tool where people are like, hey, I'm not here to be wowed. I'm here to right. find information and take take a specific action. Mm-hmm. You know, And there are situations where, hey, it's still cool to create a great experience. You might want to create like some type of just really interesting experience. But most small business websites, that's not what people are there for. They're there to get something right. done, to find information, to achieve a goal. And so you need to make it seamless for them to do that or they're going to leave and go to someone else. So I just think about it in that, that analogy with the car and that you really don't want to relearn how to drive every time you go into a new car. Same thing with websites. You want to know where everything is. Keeping it standard is helpful. So just name your blog blog. I know it's boring, but it's going to, it's going to be easier in the long, long run. It's going to help people find the right content. Okay. So, so recap the four steps to decide what pages to include on your website are one, Define the purpose of your website, whether it's to legitimize you, convert customers, attract new customers, be a salesperson, maybe an educational site. That's one. Number two is to create a list of pages. Brainstorm all the different ideas that you would have or all the different pages that you could have. And then from there, you can kind of start narrowing down what what you should have on there. Number three is structure your site for SEO. So be conscious about the page titles and the content that's on those pages, making sure that it helps drive people back to you or that it has certain keywords in it that are going to be searchable uh, for someone who's looking maybe for your product or service. And then number four, make it easy to navigate. You know, don't have your home button hidden somewhere, your phone number in a special place that you have to type in a code to get access to it. Just make it simple and easy. That's right. So, All right. Oh, I love that. I think these are all things that we can kind of take to our own websites and uh, sit down and kind of think how, how are we presenting our information to the, the world and uh, make it even better. So if you had a takeaway or an action item for us this week, Ben, what would that action item be? I just say pick one of those purposes for your website. Think about what the main priority of your website is and what it should be doing for you. What job does it need to do? Um, And then I would just pull out your phone, pull up your website right now and just look and see if it's actually achieving that purpose. Uh, If not, then start uh, this process and maybe you'll come up with a a new organization that will serve you better. 
That's right. And if you need help with your website or are looking to redesign your website, head over to Ben's website, knapsackcreative.com. They have lots of resources on there, uh, lots of great portfolio work to inspire you on how you could uh, maybe produce a better website. And, and then they also work if you pay them. Um, they will make you a website. So That's right. We'll, we'll design for money. That's yep, right. They that's will right. design for works. money. So, hey, guys, thanks so much for tuning into The Friday Habit. Uh, go to thefridayhabit.com, and there you can find show notes for this episode. There, You can also find links to our websites and ways to get in touch. And at the bottom of the page, you can download our guide to the Friday Habit system. And that's going to kind of show you how to set aside one full day each week to dedicate working on your business instead of always in your business. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave us a review in the Apple Podcast app and let us know which time travel theory you subscribe to. Also, if you have a question or topic you'd like us to cover, don't forget to record us a quick voice memo. Be the first one and send it to hello at the Friday That's right. Thanks, guys, for listening to The Friday Habit. And until next time, live every day like it's Friday.